Welcome to this week's Oregon Minute. Today we are interviewing Oregon High School seniors Chloe Jacobson and Andrew Palmer, uh, who are also student representatives on the Oregon School Board. Uh, they are here to discuss what it's been like being a student during the pandemic. So welcome Chloe and Andrew. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, thanks, it's great to be here. So my first question to both of you is, what has it been like attending school virtually during the COVID-19 pandemic? I can go ahead and start with that. Um, personally, for me, it's been pretty difficult. I've been one of those students my whole life that's never struggled with school academically. And I've just kind of been able to do everything without putting in a whole lot of effort, gotten good grades and uh, been able to focus my talents on other things that I want to. And this year certainly challenged me as far as uh, just the format that we're being presented. Our information has forced us to change some of our habits, which is not necessarily a bad thing as going to college next year, some things we're going to have to change anyway. So that that's certainly been one of the biggest struggles. I know right at the very beginning, um, the asynchronous, synchronous class schedules and the timings threw me off a little bit since there was no coherent way that it went from one teacher to another. So you could have back to back classes. And if they're AP classes, you have to leave one early and get to the other one late. And I know I, I struggle with that personally. What about you, Chloe? Yeah, um, I would agree with Andrew. Um, the virtual learning has posed many new obstacles, challenges for us. Um, Going off of what Andrew said, the schedule has definitely been harder to keep track of, having classes throughout the day at different times every single day at different weeks. Um, extracurriculars have been a challenge. I've always been so involved in different clubs and sports and with student council. So um, that's been hard for me personally, just not being able to be as involved as I'd like. And I've um, done my best to try to stay involved and do any sort of virtual online clubs that were offered. Um, but as Andrew kind of mentioned um, a little bit, this kind of sets us up a better for college, I would say, just because it relies so much on your self-motivation and responsibility to keep track of your own schedule, so. Well, I, I appreciate how you both were candidly and eloquently uh, responded to because I can't imagine that it's it's easy by any means. This is unprecedented, I think is the word that gets pushed out there a lot. So, but what I'm curious about then is what like, what do your days look like? Um, especially when it seems like everything is always changing. It seems like every couple of weeks, public health Madison and Jane County comes out with some new rules. Um, what 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 is that like to have your days constantly shifting like that. I can start. Um, it's hard for, for me personally because I rely on schedules and routine and consistency and in this environment, like there's always something that's changing, but I'd say my day-to-day -day is um, I usually have about two to three live classes depending on the day. Um, some of times they last 20 minutes, other times they last two hours. And I'm pretty much just uh, working on school throughout ma majority of the day, different assignments or extracurriculars and doing my best to take breaks in between. Um, but it's, it's really up to the individual, their own schedule, when they wanna start their most of their schoolwork, when they wanna end. Um, yeah, there's a lot of flexibility. Andrew? Um, one thing I've noticed personally is uh, I do not deal well with um, change and changing schedules. So it's kind of forced me into that. I'm very much a person who follows the same routine, especially when we're in school. And I think kind of just like the different levels of workload from week to week. One week in my AP calculus class, we could have five very easy lessons. And then the following week, we could have like two projects, do a test, and just it's a lot harder. So it's kind of difficult to follow the shift in difficulty of classes as 
one week, you're thinking, okay, this class is going to take me 20 minutes each day to complete. And then in all actuality, it ends up being an hour and a half. So that kind of makes it a little harder to balance when our workload gets done and plan out the day and when we'll have time to get stuff done. So you mentioned those are very, those are both um, very challenging aspects of this routine is especially I can relate when you say um, you are used to having a particular routine and then suddenly you're having to adapt to new changes all the time. Um, I consider myself a very routine oriented person. If I didn't have a planner, that would be a very bad situation. So that um, I, I can identify with that definitely. But um, what is the most, those are challenges, but what is the most challenging aspect of this? For me, it's gotta be the lack of social contact. I'm one of those people that kind of builds off my energy levels off of other people and just when you're looking at a screen for seven hours a day, that's just not there. And even if you do pass your friend in a grocery store or something, it just doesn't feel the same. And there's really not the same level of interaction. Even if you're texting somebody, talking to somebody over the phone, it's a lot different than seeing them face to face and just knowing that they're there and doing the same things as you do. I would have to agree with Andrew. It's definitely been um, challenging in the social aspect of just being alone all the time. Um, obviously, I'm with my peers through a computer in different classes or in a club, but it's it's not the same. Um, sometimes going until 5 p.m. without seeing a person all day when my mom gets home from work. I mean, I'm sure there's many students in the same situation. They're alone all day, every day. And um, it's 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 a little challenging to um, keep a positive mindset when there's kind of this um, loneliness <laughs> to virtual learning. So you say loneliness and um, that that leads into my next question actually really nicely is how how is this, I mean, not only are you navigating this this loneliness that you speak of, Chloe, and I'm sure Andrew, you can identify with that um, based on what you said earlier. But you have so on the inside, you're you're inside dealing with this, you know, loneliness and everything, and then on the outside, there's this global pandemic that continues to rage onward, and you, I bet you turn on the local news, and there's nothing but rising cases and death and so how how does all of this like impact you both mentally and emotionally and and i i definitely encourage both of you to to be as candid as you would like in answering that i would say um there's definitely been an impact on emotional health for me personally and um, even my friends who I, I really haven't seen much of, I can tell that it's really taken a toll on them as well. Um, it's gotten better throughout the semester. You know, I've really set into my um, sort of schedule and kind of gotten used to it. But in the beginning, it was hard. Um, I felt like there was no point to what I was doing. You know, I was working on school through a computer. I felt like I wasn't learning and in the same um, efficiency that I would have been if I had been in real school, I felt like um, like there was just no hope. Like, what was the point of waking up and doing school every day to not be learning that much and then go to bed and wake up and do it all again the same the next day? There was just it was just kind of a bad loop. So um, it's really it's taken a lot of. Um, like self motivation and just kind of focusing on the future and that the hope really is is there in the future so a lot of good things hopefully coming in 2021 what about you andrew i i'm pretty much in the same boat uh, my 
emotional health really took a hit back in March and April when uh, it became evident that this was not going to go away for a long time. And uh, I didn't, or I have experienced some issues this school year, but it was really worse for me last year at the end of the year. Um, I'm a baseball player and normally I come out of winter and gear up and ready for the season. That's one of the things that kind of keeps me grounded through the end of the year. And obviously that didn't happen. So it kind of threw me for a loop and um, made it a little difficult and made me uh, question some things. And I, I just, it, it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, and, and I think just the loneliness and not being able to see people kind of affects our learning too. And we uh, were too busy worrying about how we feel, not too busy worrying about how we feel emotionally, but we're too busy focusing on making sure we're emotionally okay, that it becomes harder to learn the information that's pre presented to us in school. And that's been my uh, experiences when we do focus and we have to focus on our emotional learning, it just kind of blocks out the learning that we do in school. So and that's kind of been my experience with it. So obviously as, as representatives on the, on the school board, um, I, I'm not super familiar with, with what that position entails, but um, I would imagine that when it came to coming up and conceptualizing policies that, you know, that, that follow public health advice as well as, you know, try to suit the needs, including mental and emotional needs of the students. Um, what were some things maybe you, I would, I would envision that you, you informed the board of some of these issues that you've experienced. So what are some things that you, you offered to the school board in that regard? Um, at the start, I really kind of told them how the method, at least in the first few weeks of school, the methods they were presenting the information just wasn't working and teachers couldn't really find a happy medium as far as lots of work and then a little work and that it was really affecting, um, I know the high school students, I don't know very many younger, uh, level students, but, um, from what I've heard in the few that I do, I know that, or in the few that I do know, I know that um, they have been struggling much in the same that we have. So I was kind of trying to, when I gave my reports, trying to make them as aware as I could about these issues. And um, of course I brought up, there was one student in my Panther Connections who mentioned that he would do school for nine hours a day. And to me, that was just appalling because we never, are doing school for nine hours a day if things are normal and typically there's not even two hours of homework additionally to the seven hours that you do so that that just shocked me and i uh i presented that to the school board and it kind of surprised some people i think and so i i've personally tried to give them the most realistic and accurate and uh information based on my interpretation, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing from uh, my fellow classmates. Yeah, um, going off of Andrew, I think our roles as student representatives in the school board is also just for, from an informative um, aspect, just kind of keeping them updated at what kind of clubs have gotten started, what kind of um, like what's going on in the high school, what we have, um, what kind of lessons we received in our homeroom classes, kind of that um, sort of things. I also, as as being a representative as of the students, I think it's also important to like and be informed from what we learn in the school board. I think that more students should watch the school board on YouTube or watch their live stream because, I mean, you really learn a lot from um, a lot of the different information on what's going on with the COVID-19 pandemic and how, like where we're at. So kind of receiving that sort of information and that's been great and help kind of guiding me as like a student council president at what kind of, um, what does the student body need? So, for example, there was a 
survey that went out to all parents that um, gave the school board a little more insight on how parents thought that their students were doing academically, emotionally, um, all of those types of things. And that led me to organize a social group for different students since that was kind of lacking in that regard. So I think that's been a really nice opportunity from the school board is just being able to stay informed and lead after that. Being a leader during this time, albeit being a student, is I think an added, I don't want to say the word burden, but it's definitely a learning experience. So what do you think as as student representatives, as as leaders in you know your high school? Um, what are some lessons that you've learned about maybe coping, you know, holding out hope, looking forward to the future, things like that? I would say just always being reminded that we're really all experiencing this and we're all going through some sort of challenge, obstacle, and everyone's having a hard time. This 2020 was definitely um, really rough on a lot of people from the students to the teachers, the administrators, um, and just kind of having that reminder that we're really all in this together, that we should really all rely on each other. That's kind of been the biggest thing that I've tried to focus on and remind my peers in different meetings and just being a student leader, trying to keep an optimistic perspective because um, there is hope in the future. And in the meantime, let's all um, talk about what we're going through. Let's, you know, we might not be together per in person. We can still connect virtually and try to find some um, support from each other. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with Chloe. I've really tried to focus on making sure people know they aren't alone and reducing as much of that isolation as we can. Obviously, like Chloe said, she's uh, she doesn't go some days without seeing another human being until 5 p.m. And we just can't avoid that, really. But um, we just need to be there for the students that want the help. And sometimes there are students that aren't really willing to admit they need the help. So we just need to be caring and um, not forceful, but we need to be willing to give them anything they need. And occasionally we might need to uh, push it a little further. I find that 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 really just makes me want to commend the both of you because it it sounds like you you endured you both endured pretty significant um, struggles at the beginning of this, but it seems that you've persevered through it and you've used these lessons and applied those to uh, to inform the school board of, of struggles as well as, you know, help other students through their struggles as well. So, um, you know, so let's let's look forward for a second, because it sounds like both of you have aspirations to attend college and and it sounds like you're, you know, as much as you've applied these lessons to high school, you you will apply them in college. So, you know, what um, after you graduate what what's next for both of you um so i plan to go to either the air force academy or the citadel which is a military college in south carolina i have been accepted to both so after graduation and uh i i will attend there for four years before taking commission into the air force where i hopefully fly and uh i hope in that time in college that i can grow as an individual and mature and that would really help me become a functioning member of adult society once I graduate in 2025. Um, I'm planning on studying a biology major, either um, at UW-Madison, I was accepted to, or Northwestern University, I'm waiting for a response. Um, one thing from the COVID-19 pandemic that I have been grateful for is I felt like I've learned so much about self-motivation and responsibility. Um, I've really just stopped procrastinating altogether and I feel like I know how to um, manage my time even better than I did before. And I think um, this virtual learning has really provided me with some 
um, new perspectives and that will really aid me in college. So, yeah. Yeah, when you, sometimes, you know, I, I'll, and I'll leave this parting quote. Um, yeah, sometimes when you're left like to your own devices and when you're isolated, I know the, for me, the first couple of months, I, I can identify with what you guys said earlier were, were tough, you know, because I'm isolated, I'm lonely. What do I do with my time? But then you eventually, there is, I think, an inner strength that we all possess. And that's the strength to persevere, to survive, to adapt to new challenges. And I think that's one of the greatest things about being human is learning how to embrace those things. So uh, with that, I want to commend the both of you once again for, um, for you know, persevering. But yeah, before we do conclude, uh, is there anything else either of you would like to share with our viewers? Not that I can think of. Uh, thank you very much for having us today. It was been, it's been a pleasure. Um, I think you're the youngest uh, guest we've ever had. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. And um, I mean, it's not like you've necessarily gone anywhere because you're at home, but um, thank you just for sharing your being so candid and honest and sharing your experiences with us. I think it'll mean a lot to our viewers. So with that, um, uh, thank you to all of our viewers out there for listening in on this week's episode. Um, and as always, tune in every Thursday at 7 p.m.